when we're talking about operating income, we're looking at why a company makes a profit. Strategists, that's what we as strategists are doing. Why does a company make a profit? I'm you know, interested in the numbers, but I'm only interested in the numbers to the extent that I can understand the business and predict how this company is going to either create more profits in the future or less profits in the future. This is ignoring, this is simplifying things. This is ignoring financing costs, taxes, depreciation and amortization, all these fancy accounting terms. It's of course ignoring investments and investment income. But for an operational company, I mean a company that's a going concern that's that's currently profitable like on shoes and the operating income helps us dig into are they making money selling shoes? How much money are they making selling shoes? Does it seem like they're going to make more money selling shoes in the future? And so that's why we can get away with looking at these fairly simplified, almost overly simplistic numbers like operating income instead of say net income or um, free cash flow. The way I've structured this, it sounds a lot like EBITDA, though please note for your accounting exam that they are not the same. Now I spent a lot of time because I get on great, I really enjoy my accounting colleagues at GW, but what they're concerned about is something different than what I'm concerned about. They're teaching students how to be accountants typically, and that means measuring the world around us as it is. Accountants are in charge of making sure numbers are accurate. There's legal reasons for this. There are business reasons for this. Whereas strategists, hopefully, if they're doing their job right, understand the past, but are looking in terms of what might be in the future should they make changes X, Y, or Z. And then their job is to go and figure out how to make this reality happen. So accounting thinks in terms of rules and definitions. If we see their definition of EBITDA, EBITDA equals net income. So they're starting with a complex outcome and then adding back interest taxes, depreciation, and amortization. So successful executives, successful small business owners, every person that I know that's exited a small business for eight figures or more tends to think in exactly this way. They think revenue first. Revenue is not an afterthought. They're thinking of their business in terms of revenue first, then cost, then they're thinking about what's left over. Uh, my cousin, for example, who runs a very successful small business, um, certainly starts with revenue, then thinks margin, then thinks output of margin in terms of profitability. So why is thinking this way important? Well, of course, if you're a good strategist, you know that you are doing two things simultaneously at all times. You are looking at ways to lower the cost to produce your items, and you are looking at ways to increase the willingness of customers to pay for your items in the future. So cost reduction, willingness to pay increase. Gimwatt and Rivkin, who popularized the phrase competitive advantage, defined this as a wedge between costs and willingness to pay. Operating income, or ish EBITDA, tells us how much money the actual business itself earns independent of taxes or financing. Are they making money selling shoes? Are they making money selling cans of corn? Operating income does a decent job of getting us this information. In general, strategy doesn't have great estimates for profit. Of course, we all agree that net income is the ultimate final number in profit, but it's not necessarily a great number to use in terms of looking at whether a company is profitable this year or profitable next year, so much occurs between operating income and the ultimate net income. So all else equal, almost all strategists, investors will start with margin. So even sophisticated private equity investors will start with say EBITDA and then often think in terms of multiples. Now, that's a really easy way to value, simple way to value a company. Uh, it's not nearly as complex as a discounted cash flow, but you see very sophisticated private equity investors using these methods to at least initially value or, or look to see if a company has the kind of value that they are looking for. So revenue isn't great. Free cash flow for an existing stable company is great. You know, certainly investors like Warren Buffett often start with looking at free cash flow, but it's not great for the kind of growing companies that we tend to talk about in strategy class or that my MBA students often go into when they start their careers. So operating income or, you know, again, ish EBITDA are simply some decent estimates of how much money the operating portion of a business 
can generate each year. It's a good starting point. If you're interested, I'm going to produce a follow-up video to this, and it's going to be called the Margin Detective. Actually, I'm going to call it the Gross Margin Detective. And I'm going to look at how, when I'm working with consulting clients, how I look at the marginal elements of their COGS and the marginal elements of their SGNA to optimize what they're doing. And usually this often comes down to marketing or minor um, uh, operating changes in terms of their efficiency. So it's a topic that I am extremely interested in and I hope you'll watch that when that video comes out soon. Thanks so much for watching.